this unless I retire. He was very reluctant to do it, but ultimately he agreed with the advice he was getting, which is that he had no choice. It, he simply didn't have any choice anymore. It was it just the situation was no longer tenable, and if he wanted to have a defense, and if we wanted the department to run smoothly, this is the only way it was going to happen. So if this white knight in shining armor had not come forward in the form of the of the legal defense team, this, this super agency, the super law firm, if they had not come forward, Mike would still be the sheriff today? Not necessarily, because we still had the issue of him, of, of divided attention within the department and the distractions that that created. And even with the existing law firm, there's there are a lot of out-of-pocket expenses that you have to do, you know, everything from jury consultants to um, investigators and all kinds of different things that, I'm not saying they're doing any of these, but I know these are the types of things they do. And that, and, and that could only be paid for through a legal defense fund. And one of the questions that come up was, can you take, there's, there's a state law that says you can have a legal defense fund. Oh, that's nice. There's another state law that says you can't accept a gift of more than $320. One of the questions was, how do these two statutes intersect? No one could give us a clear answer. So will we have a legal defense fund as a private citizen? I, I don't know. And probably the answer is probably yes. Um, but that's a decision that will be made. And frankly, it probably won't be disclosed because at that point he's a private citizen. So, uh, how, how will um, the two Jones Day guys uh, and uh, Dean and yourself, how do legal duties split up in, in defending this case? Who's doing what? Well, I'm not a criminal defense attorney. I'm, I'm the sheriff's personal attorney, so I'll, I'll be speaking to him and I'll be involved in, uh, in the meetings. Uh, Brian's son uh, and Dean Stewart will be the two leads, and I don't think they've yet, because this will start tomorrow, I don't think they yet have worked out how that's going to be divided up. Any is other this, questions? Is this law firm going to, I hope, uh, Deborah Cronin as well? No. <coughs> no. I do, I, I do believe that she will ultimately have a similar pro bono firm. Uh, and I think that'll probably start in the next week or two, but it won't be Jones Day because you you want to have separate counsel. But I think another big firm will probably be um, <coughs> representing her on a pro bono basis. Any indication that might be? Yeah, but I want to let them announce it. I, I prefer not to. Once again, what convinced the sheriff to resign? Uh, the two reasons were the demands on his time uh, in terms of spending one or two days a week in the office, and the. Um, that's the necessity of having a pro bono legal firm uh, to help him out and, and, and the legal complications that, that, uh, that came out of that. What is more important than the other? Um, I'd say that the second, you know, the fact that he simply couldn't mount a defense was probably more important than the first, but ultimately I think the first would have driven the decision if the second didn't exist. Mark, you mentioned that you offered legal services to the sheriff uh, pro bono, and that became a meritless issue when it was raised before. But did the defense team now decide we can't overcome this this issue. I mean, you're saying it was resolved before, but now it's not. Well, to understand what happened before was a complaint was simply submitted, and ultimately the attorney general was found at Maricopa and didn't pursue it, but didn't issue a written opinion. And you know, <coughs> big firms like to have you know written opinions that they can look at and you know touch and, and be comfortable with that that, 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 that says that this is all copacetic and, and resolves issues like I raised about the, you know, the intersection of the gift limit statute versus the, right. the legal defense fund statute. Keep in mind the law changed on January 1 so that local officials in Orange County now can have legal defense funds. A uh, new state law came in and preempted county law. Uh, but that didn't solve the issue of what, how, how things relate to the gift statute. And it just got more and more complicated and there was no quick resolution. Were there any issues for Brian Sun and Jones Day to stay in the case? Did they say, we need to resign or we can't stay in the case? It wasn't that direct, but the thing is, is that it became more and more uh, complicated to deal with. Could you discuss his salary pension? Yeah. Um, I'm not certain what his salary is. I think a couple of people earlier indicated it was right around $190,000. Whatever it is, and it's a matter of public record, um, and when he retires, his pension is exactly the same. Uh, he's been working for the county for free for a number of years, so nothing will change from him, for him uh, from that point of view. So he'll retire, he'll get his, he'll get his, his pension, which will be uh, the, the same as what he's currently being paid. If his legal bills to date exceed his net worth, how is he going to pay them? He's going to pay them off as he can. Is he going to sell his house? I don't know. I doubt it. But I don't know. It's a if, possibility. Now, why not wait until Shirley Grindle's complaint about Mike accepting pro bono legal services wound its way and a ruling was made? Is this, were you guys anticipating that 
you were talking about the, the intersection of the two laws and not quite sure if he could accept pro bono legal services. And it could be several months before that the, the complaint wound, wound its way through the system. We, didn't, we couldn't put the case on hold for two months because we were trial <coughs> in June. And the other issue there is when you, when you look at it is that they, um, that would simply, sometimes the, the Attorney General's office just does nothing and that's the way you eventually figure out they're not doing anything or they simply issue a thing saying we're not pursuing the complaint, but they don't give you a clear written decision as to what's going on in a way that could give the kind of comfort that, that, that everybody needed. So if down the road, say you had, your Mike doesn't, hadn't resigned, uh, continued you know, to, to fight in court, accepting the pro bono legal services, if the Attorney General had ruled against you, would that would that mean that Mike would have had to pay back the legal? And I'm wondering what would have what would have been the result then? If that you know, I don't know. It, 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 it's impossible for me to. Um, uh, it, it's a hypothetical question that I can't really answer because because the ruling could have taken a whole variety of different uh, contexts, and depending on, on what the basis was, what he would have to do would be changed. Would change. So I, I just I don't know without actually seeing how they would have ruled. I'll take two more questions. Is there the continued pressure from the board or any anywhere else uh, in political or, or policy establishment on her to resign? No, that had absolutely no role in it. Because just as their sole role is, they, they're the sole source of picking who the replacement is, they have no role in deciding whether he stays or goes. That's solely his decision. And that had absolutely no no part of it. Is the pension issue a uh, difference between him resigning and him retiring? No. no. I mean, he's retiring, but the, whether he said he was resigning or retiring, it would, wouldn't change a thing. And also, when, from you, when, you, when you resign, you, you do retire if, if you're a retirement age. And also, from the, the uh, replacement standpoint, you said Kaliski didn't want it for personal reasons, and Anderson is the one. But what happened to Martini? Martini um, was uh, uh, dismissed today. Um, and he. Um, all the assistant sheriffs were at will. Uh, it was part, of, it, it was part of the reorganization uh, that needed to occur uh, in order to, to get the result that, that was necessary. Uh, but that's that's what happened with Martini, and that's that's posted on the website. I'm not announcing that for the first time. What was the basis for his dismissal? There wasn't a basis given. He's at will. They don't, you don't have to give. You don't have to give a basis. Thank you very much. What's your full name? Oh, full name is Michael Schroeder. S C H R O E D E R. Uh, chair of the legal, uh, chair of legal affairs for the Orange County Sheriff's Department.